Hi friends, recently someone brought me such a cheap subwoofer. It is for a car, but has a built-in power supply and can operate from a 220 volt AC. This is probably the cheapest active subwoofer with a universal power module. Such modules can be found at Chinese online shops for $10. Links to the purchase can be found in the description. In general, the design is very budget. It has very small weight and dimensions, which makes it an excellent option for those people who just need a small subwoofer in the car. Yes, I know what you think. Can you call this thing a subwoofer? But it's true. Manufacturers have put in a bunch of features, thanks to which the system can reproduce tracks with SD cards or through Bluetooth. There are block of filters, adjustment of the volume and frequency range, and of course supporting the remote control. But the owner didn't like wheezing, which can be heard at maximum loudness. The reason for this wheezing is that the amplifier is powered directly from 12 volts. The fact is that with a power supply of 12 volts for a load of 4 ohms, impossible to get a sound power of more than 20 pure watts in AB class. Otherwise, all physics is built on lies. There are amplifiers of class H. They can give more than 18 watts at 12 volts. But these amplifiers include small inverters that charge capacitors and, if necessary, connect these capacitors to the system and increasing the supply voltage to achieve higher power. In any serious car amplifier, there is a voltage converter that raises the standard 12 volts several times, and only then this voltage is applied to a low-frequency power amplifier. There are wheezes at maximum volume in your car radio and budget amplifiers due to low, improperly supply voltage. Let's look that is inside. Here we find a dead and maximally cheap circuit. The amplifier is built on microchips TDA2003. The Chinese have naturally wiped the marking of microchips, but an experienced person will understand what is behind that. The chips are connected in the bridge to increase the output power. Each chip can give 10 to 12 maximum watts. In some documents, the power of 20 watts is indicated. But this is the dirty sound with a bunch of distortions. Pay attention to the AC power supply, which has no more than 10 watts. It is flyback power unit. There are two options for increasing the output power. First option is to throw out the entire stuffing and assemble a normal amplifier. This option is the most humane, but it will cost more than the subwoofer itself. We will have to make a normal amplifier with a bipolar power supply, a converter to it and normal filter unit. And after that it will most likely be necessary to replace the dynamic head, since it is no more than 20 to 30 watts. The second option is less humane but working. According to the datasheet on the TDA2003 chip, you can power it up to 18 volts. At least this voltage is safe for them, and the higher the supply voltage, the greater the output power. In past videos, I made a converter from 12 to 18 volts. It was created just for this purpose. We connect the inverter to the amplifier. The ground pin is common and positive pin of 18 volts from the inverter is connecting to the plus of amplifier. That is the fifth pin of the micro circuit. Then connect the inverter input directly to the power supply where 12 volts is supplied. On the amplifier board is a diode through which 12 volts supplied to the circuit. It must be removed. Thus, the amplifier board already received not 12 but 18 volts and this is completely safe. Circuits include a digital control, but it is powered by a stabilizer of 5 volts, which can safely operate at an input voltage of up to 24 volts. Now, let's measure the power of the amplifier to see the rework results. I measure the power before connecting the inverter, so the input voltage is initially 12 volts, and then 18 volts will be fed from the laboratory power supply. I saw a bunch of videos where people measure the power of the amplifier by connecting the speaker as a load. It's wrong. It is necessary to use 4 ohm resistor as a load. If possible, use non-wire resistors since wire resistors have an inductance that affects the test results. 
Usually, the load resistor must be immersed in water, because during the test it will heat up, and consequently its resistance will increase. In my case, the power is small, and I will do a short-term test so that the resistor does not overheat. But I didn't find powerful resistors with 4 ohm resistance. My sample is 5.3 ohms, hence the real power on 4 ohms dynamic head will be more than we get during the measurement. A sinusoidal signal with a frequency of 1 kHz is applied to the amplifier input. The signal amplitude is 5 volts. Parallel to the load resistor is connected the voltmeter, which must be capable to measure an alternating voltage. We apply 12 volts to the amplifier and the multimeter shows an alternating voltage of about 6.3 volts. Knowing the resistance of the resistor, we can easily calculate the power that dissipates on the resistor. And now we raise the supply voltage to 18 volts. The multimeter already shows 9.7 volts and this is almost 20 watts. This is about 2.5 times more than with an input voltage of 12 volts. After installing the converter, let's compare what was before and what happened after. The difference is obvious. Unfortunately, microchips TDA2005 physically not capable give more. They are among the cheapest 12 volts microchip. The project is complete. The owner was pleased. All the necessary information, including the link to the video in which I did the inverter, will be left in the description. There are also several references to the finished models of different capacities that can be embedded in any passive subwoofer. If this video was useful, please rate it as your favorite and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the release of new videos. Don't forget to subscribe to my group in Facebook. The link is under the description. Now I have to say goodbye. With you was Kaisan TV.